It's a great pleasure for me to introduce uh, Dr. B.N. Suresh, the speaker of uh, today. He is a well-known uh, aerospace scientist. He has a distinguished career. After his master's from IIT Madras, in, uh, he, he specialized in control systems. That was his thesis topic for the Salford University, UK. Then he joined ISRO and grew with the institute became the director of Vikram Sarabhai Space Center in Trivandrum. I suppose you know that this institute specializes in building launch vehicles and satellites. He performed a very interesting experiment uh, space, uh, which is requiring a space vehicle. Uh, we will get that model when he is talking and he will perhaps uh, describe the exciting experience. You send something to space and then try to recover it and it was captured in the ocean. He also started that institute which we have displayed outside. If you want to become a space uh, scientist or a space technologist, then we have an institute and he was the founder director of that and that is in Trivandrum, Indian Institute of Space Technology. He is also a visiting professor in uh, IIT Mumbai and uh, MIT Manipal. He is a member of several national and international bodies devoted to aerospace and space technology. He has won a number of awards, I will not read out all of them, which have is a sign of recognition of his contribution to this field. Government of India honored his uh, 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 recognition, honored him with uh, Padma Shri in 2003 and last year he was awarded Padma Bhushan. He led a team of scientists to the United Nations for discussion on peaceful uses of outer space, so which is a very interesting thing. Excitements of rockets, you know anything that you fly as a rocket is an excitement because you don't know what would happen, whether it would go straight and do its job or something else would happen. It's extremely difficult. I think as you go along you would know that. Now, before I get into the straightaway rockets, I thought I would give you a little glimpse of why space at all. You know, this is a question often asked wherever you go. And also many times they add with a certain masala that why are you wasting so much of money for space when we are in uh, so much of trouble in the country. You know, this is the question I think every now and then, including the latest debates, what you see in television. So I thought uh, we should answer that first, okay? You see, it was um, our founding father, Dr. Vikram A. Sarabhai, I think all of you may be aware of that. Somewhere in 60s, imagine in 1960, to visualize that a country like India should venture into the space. And what was his vision? You know, these are all visionaries. What, what was his vision? His vision was that he understood that the kind of advanced technologies that are available can be utilized for the benefit of mankind. You know, that is the bottom line. We at space always keep telling everywhere that Whatever we do, whatever money that is spent, which is all public money, and at the end I would tell you what we have done, essentially that we would like to improve the lives of the common man, help the society, help the nation. I think you would have heard the other day our Honorable Prime Minister talking about how space can help the society. You see, what happens is that uh, you have excellent opportunity to go to space and look at the Earth. You know, I have heard astronauts, the astronauts have gone from our cosmonauts, our taikonauts, whatever you want to call. There are very many who have gone around the Earth and uh, when they go there, one feeling that they get is uh, the Earth a small tiny globe hole in the universe, I think you would have just seen in the planetarium right now that uh, it's a very fragile globe and we don't know what would happen to the earth, poor earth. 
but at the same time you have an excellent opportunity to look at the earth to get the synoptic view of the earth what does it mean once you get a synoptic view of the earth that means you are looking at the entire earth as a small tiny globule how does it really solve this problems of the society a country like india you know we are 1.25 billion population today and it's increasing at an enormous rate but then the natural resources that are available they are limited not only that i think we have been exploiting left and right without any worry and uh, it always worries me that what would happen to our next generation next to next generation i think they have to worry about that you know we have been exploiting left and right you know that the fossil fuel which is being used as a petrol and diesel is going to become dry and maybe another 50 60 80 years what are we going to do you see millions of vehicles going all over bangalore what will happen to them have we thought about it communication one another additional area that you can really communicate anywhere to anywhere distant far off and natural disasters have been increasing and of different kinds are there we don't claim that we would get solution to all such natural disaster but then there are areas where we could give solution there are area where we could manage better because you are able to take the picture very fast and send it across and understanding the weather you see of late what has happened is the weather has become very very hostile and nowadays you see that if it rains it pours and then creates lots of problems and understanding the weather in that particular area the space has made tremendous contributions and there is lot more to do not that we have mastered today i think particularly for youngsters you should know that then of course the fragile balance between the nature and the environment and there are lots and lots more one can do ut using this space you know that's what we will come to that now when we when we talk about that how do we do in space there are three segments one is the applications i think you would have heard the lecture on applications you know that is basically where what all i mentioned in terms of remote sensing communications weather monitoring navigation all this we call it applications that is the one which sort of generates the data and makes the life simpler i, I would tell you so that's where you can see that you can have remote sensing you can have navigation you can have weather monitoring so on so forth but in order to apply this space applications how do you do that you need to carry instrumentation right instrumentation what we call in terms of payloads you know that's what we use and depending on the application that you need to do you have to come out with right instrumentation once you have the instrumentation you have to have a satellite to put it and then you have to position it appropriately to do the job that is what is called satellite here you know this is the second segment but then sarabhai could think that we must do end to end when we talk about space and that's where he visualized and initiated the action that we also should build rockets essentially rockets are required to position the satellite where you want you know i'll come to that little later where you want you need to position one may ask that why can't you use someone else rocket and many countries they try to do but then they take you for a ride when you want to do you know we wanted to sort of launch our mars mission on a particular day you will not get a launch no way you can get it or you want to increase your transponders you will not be able to get the launches that you are looking for but at the same time i tell you is the most difficult technology in terms of achieving it you know in 1979 we had our first ever launch slv3 you know who was the project director dr apj abdul kalam dr apj abdul kalam was the project director for that now the question is that after that why i want to mention is 1980 july 
we launched and we joined the Allied Club of Six Nations. Since then, how many years were, 1980 to now, not a single country could succeed in putting a satellite into orbit. Korea, Brazil, many, many countries have been trying again and again, but they are not able to do that. So, you know, that is what, in fact, what you see here is the, what I mentioned, the tiny rocket SLV-3, which was built by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, and of course, uh, what we call the augmented. This is what we call as the workhorse polar satellite launch vehicle and uh, geosynchronous launch vehicle. You know, they're like that. I'll come to the launch vehicles a little later. There are three segments. One, applications, which really carry out all the tasks that helps the nation, helps each one of us, okay? Then in order to do that, you need to have a payload and a satellite. And in order to put the satellite at appropriate orbit, what is that orbit? You see, you can see here, this is what is called remote sensing. In, the, in other words, you sort of able to survey the resources of the country or take the photographs, pictures, and in a very simple terms that the orbit is something like my head to toe, okay? That is the orbit, is defined like that. Anywhere between 500 to 1000 kilometers distance. Why head to toe is? Because Earth is rotating, okay? East to west. And as it, it, it keeps on rotating on a continuous basis and Earth, Earth rotates, you are able to sort of picture the entire globe within a certain period. And that is the technology that is used for sensing various things. And I'm sure that when someone talks on application, they would spend more time. How do you do that? I think remember that, okay? Now, when it comes to the communications, this is communication, it's called geosynchronous. Essentially, it is the orbit across my belt, okay? Because as the Earth rotates, the satellite also rotates and by making it synchronous with the movement of the earth, that satellite gets positioned in a fixed manner above you. If you put it in the Indian subcontinent, that satellite would look at us on a continuous basis and that is what is called roughly around 36,000 kilometers. You know, that is what geosynchronous launch vehicle, polar satellite because it's a pole, pole to pole, polar and that is what called remote sensing. And of course, you have number of other uh, uh, scientific, you know, like we did for uh, various other scientific purposes, okay? Essentially, these are the three major orbits. Why I am talking orbit is, when the satellite people, they build spacecraft and tell us that you put it in such and such orbit, something like you board a vehicle here in Bangalore and you ask the, ask some, the driver, either take to Mysore or to Markhara or Shomoga, you know, like that, I should know where I have to go, right? That is the purpose. Now, as I mentioned, you know, we started, what you see here is the church building. It was 1962. If you come to city of Thiruvananthapuram, you see this church. And today it has become an excellent museum, space museum, one of the very good museums. If you happen to come to Trivandrum, don't forget to go and visit. I think all are allowed, public are allowed. And uh, in fact, our whole activity started here. Uh, you would have heard Dr. Kalam mentioning about where science and religion, they work in synergy. Because we didn't have a place, we went to what we call Thumba, a coastal region, and we wanted to launch all our sounding rockets, small tiny rockets. And uh, this church was there as a part of that range and he went and asked the bishop that we would like to get this. You know, within blinking an eye, they discussed overnight and next day they came and surrendered the bishop's house and the church building. I think that's how we started. Maybe a good woman. Okay? Now, 1980 onwards, we made a space museum. And as far as the rocketry is concerned, you can see that. We started 21st November 1963. A tiny rocket given by Americans, what is called Nike Apache, we launched. And why we started in Thumba is, you know, we, you, you might have heard sounding rocket. Basically, you, you would like to sound the atmosphere to understand various aspects of science related to the atmosphere. At uh, lower atmosphere, middle atmosphere, upper atmosphere, so on and so forth. Okay? Now, 
many people have the misnomer how the racket works. I am not going to give you a lecture, but I think this is one slide I want to put because people should know that how it really goes beyond Earth's atmosphere or even anywhere else you can operate. So basically you load with the propellants and when they burn, ignite it, the all hot gases go through that. And then this is the one which increases the velocity. And this is what we call the Newton's third law of motion, okay? Action versus reaction and generate the thrust. So that is the principle. And when you want to put the satellite, what we do is, it is not enough to have one rocket. You have to have a number of them, depending on the kind of payload that you are going to carry and kind of distance that you need to travel. So based on that, you come out with the stacking them together in different configurations. So that is what is called the number of rocket stage. You see, can stage one, stage two, stage three he is termed as the launch vehicle. Okay. You can see that this is the one we did. And uh, you know, I am fortunate enough to get associated from the first launch till the last launch. Almost all, why almost all launches have been part of that. I think this is some unique opportunity I've got and I'm very happy about that. And this is the one in 1979, August it was launched and again, one simple problem which was not seen properly ended up with the loss. And we lost the that particular mission. And that is one of the reasons they say that it is not rocket science. You know, what is rocket science? It's, it's no different from any of the technologies accepting, you must visualize all possible failure scenarios, including a, a bolt and nut, a solder joint, many things which are associated. There are thousands of parts when you launch till it puts the satellite into the orbit. All of them have to function as you have planned. And the entire duration, mind you, is about 18 to 19, 20 minutes of that kind. And when we sit in the shower, looking at the console, you know, after we press the button, we have no hold. You have to just go on praying if you like. If you are a believer in God, you keep on praying. If not, you just close your eyes and look at it, stare it. But then, the difference between the success and failure is very, very thin. And today, I think the country, they look more for failures than for successes, because that makes excellent news, possibly. Anyway, now, you see, the, 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 this height was 22 meters, and 17 tons weight, and 40 kg payload, low Earth orbit, it's around uh, 400 kilometers low Earth orbit, just to master the technology. It contains several, I'll show you that. And then, you can see that this tiny rocket, we added two more rockets, what we call strap-on. And also you can see that the top where the satellite comes, you slightly make it bulbous. I will come to that a little later. It's called augmented. These two are where we learned lots of technologies, where we face the failures. One interesting thing is that nobody would give you any technology, whatever money you give. Because you know the, the what is called the dual use of technology or missile technology regime, it's called. So we are always under embargo, no matter what happens all over the globe, nothing they would supply, no country would supply. I think you have to learn, like child learns walking, you need to do only by falling number of times and there is no shortcut that is available. You can see that we have had 27 launches so far and accepting the first launch, all of them are successful. It is something very, very creditable for a country like ours. Launch vehicle technology, as I mentioned, of course, we are not so lucky when it comes to GSLV. I'll tell you a little later. But then, this is one workhorse, I think we have mastered the technology. And what it contains is, you can see that, I showed you earlier, stage one, this is the stage one. It is roughly 139 tons of solid propellant, which means, Every second, 1.39 ton burns. Every second. Before I could complete the sentence, maybe six, eight tons have been burned. And that motor, when it's burned, the power it generates, you would have 
seen that Boeing 747, right, which can carry 400, 500 people across the continent. The power generated by one equivalent Boeing 747, this particular motor generates four times that power actually. You know, that is the kind of power it needs to generate because this whole thing when you stack it, it uh, with the propellants added around 300, 320 tons it will weigh and whole weight it has to lift majestically and take it, okay? And this is the one, is the second stage. Of course, these are the SLV3, that whatever main motor, they are the tiny ones we have put stop on, added on to the surrounding. You can see the size of this uh, giant which is available here. And this is what we call liquid propellants. You can see that one oxidizer, one, one fuel, about 40 ton we load. This is, you can see that a motor is hung inside. It's a non-metallic motor. In order to save weight, we do that. And then there is another tiny four stage. Again, it's a two ton liquid and this is satellite. And what you see is what we call as the payload fairing or heat sheet. Basically to protect it during the atmospheric phase of flight. When it goes through the atmosphere about 70, 80, 100 kilometers, the tremendous amount of heating it has because this goes at a very high velocity when you fire it. And in that process, the entire energy gets converted into heat energy. And if you don't protect, your satellite will be in serious. But once it happens, it will go. I'll just show you how it happens. You see, this is uh, just to give you, in a nutshell, same vehicle, whatever is shown first, second, third, and fourth. You see this, it takes off majestically, vertically, then almost goes up to 100, 110 kilometers. It will burn out. The idea is that once it burns out, you don't carry that because you are wasting energy. So what you want to do is you want to throw it out. So, you know, just pull them out, separate, and then throw it out. That's what happens. And, you know, it's about... 300 tons, this was one of the earlier vehicles, uh, it is uh, 680 kilograms, we put uh, one of the remote sensing satellites and you know you can see that it sheds something like uh, 66 tons and whole thing takes about 100 seconds but it would have traveled around 500 kilometers from Sri Harikota along the particular uh, range. So the next, the remaining ones take over, second one comes and about 1800 kilometers. Third one comes, you see, it would have traveled almost 7000 kilometers across the globe. And the time taken is roughly about uh, 15, 16 minutes. And ultimately, when it reaches the required velocity, you know, it has number of onboard computers, it decides on a continuous basis what is happening, what is not happening. And at that right time, computer says that, yes, we have achieved and you separate the satellite and put it into the orbit, and this is the orbit. That means we have taken very safely the satellite into its right home. You know, that is the job we do. And as I mentioned that if anything goes wrong in this particular period, each launch around vehicle about 180, 190 crores, and satellite costs around 200, 250 crores because that's very, very expensive. It has to work for a long period. You know, it's another kind of technology. I'm sure that uh, when you hear a lecture on satellite, you would appreciate that. Plus, the range and associated, you know, almost around 450 to 500 crores kind of thing that you're talking. And if your launch vehicle does not do its job and put the satellite into orbit, that is the kind of money for the national exchequer I am dealing with. You see the kind of tension that we have and mind you that every minute that we spend in the Sri Harikota range while we launch, it's like one year for us. So 18 minutes will be something like 18 years. Our heart rate will go up and we don't know really what happens anyway. But at the same time, when the satellite is launched successfully, you can see the jubilation. I'll show you that as we go along. You know, this is just to show you, this is the geosynchronous launch vehicle. And uh, you can see that this is again 139 tons. But instead of tiny ones, we have gone for a huge liquid stages, okay? Huge liquid, four of them are there, you can see that. Then, of course, this is the identical to the what we are using PSLV. This is what is known as the 
I think you would have heard any number of times the cryogenic stage. It's one of the very, very complex technologies. It took more than 15, 16 years for us to master actually. You know, this is the one. And of course, there are a number of elements with, through which we link. They are all called interstate structure and whatnot. You can see that it will be something like when you stack it, about a 49 meter, roughly 15 to 16 story building. It will be, and this particular one will be weighing around 420 tons as against 300 of PSLV. And this sort of puts, when we put the satellite into the orbit, somewhere around 200 to 50 nearer to the Earth, and as far as the 36,000, what we call in terms of further distance, we call apogee and perigee, okay? That is the kind of uh, power that it generates. And again, it's around 18 to 20 minutes, not more than that. And this is what I mentioned that uh, the, the, the payload fairing or heat sheet is just kept it safe till it comes out of the atmosphere. And once it comes out of the atmosphere, it is uh, sort of, it just separates. And we don't want to keep it beyond what is required because you have very dead weight you can't carry. That means you are wasting your energy. And uh, you know, here what we see is the completely electronics bay. It contains the telemetry, telecommand, power, onboard computer, a whole range of things will be there. And uh, that is the one which really takes care of everything in terms of carrying out all the tasks. They are all pre-programmed and put there. Similarly, it will send thousands of parameters on a continuous basis in real time data we get and we get the display in the and this is just in a nutshell to show that today we have these four vehicles and you can see that what we started as 40 kg is at, uh, almost now 2.5 tons it can do in the geo transfer orbit that is what i mentioned 200 to 36000 if i convert this into equivalent to lower orbit this can carry almost 8 to 10 tons from 40 kg you know this is the kind of uh, advancement that has happened in the launch vehicle and you would hear very soon before the end of this year possibly that what we call mark 3 this weighs around 632 tons and this is here we have the liquid stage its a diameter will be 4 meter in diameter and uh, these are the instead of 2.8 diameter we go to 3.2 so roughly its footprint if i take it's 11 to 12 meters, you know, so that is the footprint that it will, be, it will be there and it will weigh around 640 tons and you have a big cryogenic stage and of course the satellite here. This, uh, one of the experimental flights we are planning in the month of maybe November or December. I think uh, when you hear that, uh, you just remember what I have told you, okay? This is, this is what it shows really. Instead of 139, we have 200 tons. In fact, this is the third biggest solid motor in the world today. You know, what is used in the space shuttle, what is used in the Ariane program, and this will be the third biggest. And you can see that 110 tons propellant and 25 tons propellant, this is how it is uh, uh, sort of stacked, and then this is expected to fly very soon. Now, I will not dwell on this, but then uh, what really in terms of complexity is involved? You see, we learned all basics in our, uh, this is where we learned certain things. And here I would like to mention one thing. This is what is called augmented satellite. It looks tiny, but then the several, several lessons we learned in augmented satellite launch vehicle. In the lighter wind, when we started this ASLV, we migrated, we were very happy that we had three more SLV flights successfully and we thought that we have mastered, you know, we are all very, very proud that we could do in rocket technology, we have mastered. The first one failed. We thought we understood, we do the failure analysis, understood, second one we launched, again failed. This was all in the early 1980s, somewhere around 84, 85, that time frame. And you know, people started making fun of us. When SLE filed itself, they said it's a sea-loving vehicle. When SLE filed twice, they said it's always sea-loving vehicle. And it was very difficult, mind you, that even to, for us, for each one of us, to show our face because they were very hostile as far as the space activity is concerned. And 
wherever we go wherever we meet anyone the question that is being asked is why are you wasting money you know we had not done so much about application we had not shown to the nation that what we can do in terms of the advantages that one can gain in the country it was very difficult but then it took 3 years for us to spend time we had our own committee we had a national committee we caught hold of all academics industry people work together you know that is our strength when you work in isro we don't work in isolation we work in almost in unison all across the country i think that gave us tremendous amount of uh, knowledge and we learned our technology when we launched our third aslv then of course when we came to psl the first one again we made many number of computers and we made it very software in intensive and where there we faced the problem but we learned but you know this is how the technology has been learned you can see as liquid propulsion we brought and as i mentioned large booster we brought cryogenic here you can see that heavy cryogenics and large boosters and uh, this is the range where we can launch this is how the our evolution has happened over a period okay now this is something we are very very proud i think we became this uh, i mean there are many things that we have done but i want to show a couple of them just to bring the excitement of doing that you can see that this is the one on 28th april 2008 we did i think we became the second nation in the world to launch 10 satellites simultaneously not only 10 satellites we can see that it belongs to the, these two are our indian satellites is the main cartosat for cartography and this is one of the our own satellites again for remote sensing and you can see canada denmark japan canada germany japan netherlands 10 satellites and each one one after another we injected and all of them have functioned beautifully really you know that really gave us tremendous amount of uh, confidence and at the same time you would be quite interested to know that how we did i will not get into the details again but you can see that this is where we put all the satellites and you can see that this is the main satellite this is what i mentioned to you the electronics bay or avionics bay you can see the the density of packages that are there all round not only this in fact there are packages running all over the vehicle the the the, the kind of uh, the harnessing that wiring we do if you take in terms of distance or length involved it is it runs into several kilometers you know that is a kind of wires running up and down and you can see another satellite this is german satellite this is netherlands and you can see we cluster them and put it in this bay and each one you launch you wait for another 20 30 seconds you reorient separate it so this action continues and all of them they go into the orbit the moment we put foreign satellite into the orbit we have nothing else to do they take over our job is over only our satellite our satellite people and tracking people they take over and they do whatever is needed of for us actually okay because this is uh, already you have seen and uh, outside it is there but then uh, you know this is one of the very exciting space voyage i must tell you that uh, and uh, again very very unique solution i think our friends uh, from satellite group and uh, tracking group they have done here you can see that this is where we launched initially okay 250 kilometers near and 22 but then it has its own engine the satellite has its own engine you fire it such that it goes goes on increasing and you can see that at one point of time at the time of launch moon was here and then it has traveled here and at this point you can see that it covers both earth and moon and at this point what you need to do is you need to reduce the velocity of the your uh, chandrayaan 1 so that it comes into the gravitation field of the moon that's all what you do you just turn it by 180 degree and fire it for some fixed time which is pre calculated if it is successful same thing as we have done in the mom also almost identical thing and then of course it becomes the satellite of the moon it's one of the again exciting space voyage and this is uh, any number of photographs are available this is something interesting that uh, you know we also wanted to come back not just go there in the long run there are very many applications where even if we decide to put humans or even robotic missions and you want to get it back you have to bring back but the problem is when it comes through the atmosphere 
some about 80 to 100 kilometers, it gets heat, heated up, the module gets heated up to the level of something like 3000 to 4000 degrees Celsius, imagine. While the temperature felt is so much, the inside, these are all inside elements, the temperature here should be around 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. How do you do that? This is what is called protecting the internal elements by special materials which can, which will act as an insulation. You know, that is what we see here. They are all tiles, silica tiles. It looks like a simple thing, but number of tiles, almost like a space shuttle technology. What they used is identical. You go on pasting, then it's, it's a very complicated technology. And uh, you know what we do is, we put it, you know, we had the main satellite also. We didn't do it just for the heck of it. Main satellite, one of the, uh, yeah, the, the, the 625 kilometer, we put that. Then after some time, we put this also, you can see that, separated. And also it was there for 10 days. We did certain microgravity experiments. I think two experiments, one from Indian Institute of Science and one from uh, Metallurgical Laboratory. They did it. They got good results. But what we do is, you know, you can see that it's around 635. The velocity will be something like 8 kilometers per second, per second. Okay, multiply by the corresponding number to get in hours. And when it comes and touches, you know, it should be brought to something like 12 meters per second. This is the distance is very clear. You know, up to 100 kilometers, there is no problem because there is no dense atmosphere. It still has the same velocity. But between 100 to 5 kilometers when it enters, the entire energy has to be dissipated, dissipated as heat energy. And in the process, it gets heated something like 3000 to 4000 degrees. I, there is a video if you are interested, I will show you in the end. I have not made it as a part. If you find time and you think that is uh, useful, I will show you. This is the module and these are the tiles. And uh, in order to reduce, after it comes through 5 kilometers, you have a number of parachutes you sort of reduce for that, you can bring it to the level depending on how you do and it comes and uh, falls in the sea and you know you can see that we did it at the top of the Mexico, uh, so in the other side, other side of the globe, we gave the command and uh, it has travelled, we were supposed to get it around 150-200 kilometers uh, east of Sri Harikota or Chennai and uh, it has traveled, you can see, something like uh, 17,000 kilometers from there. And our intention was to, it should come within a radius of 15 kilometers. So that we, we had put a ship there, we had put Coast Guard, they should see that it comes. And mind you, in the again, very first attempt, it came well within a radius of 8 kilometers and landed. And. Uh, the, the tires that what we had pasted, you know, I happened to go there along with our then chairman, Madhavan Nair, and we went and saw when it came to the shore, we felt that it was the same module as we had sent when we launched it. You know, we look at it and then integrate with the vehicle. It was almost similar to that, but that fellow has traveled thousands of kilometers. It was in the orbit, did experiments, and then came back, okay? In fact, I keep telling in the light ravine, this is available in the in the museum of uh, Trivandrum, what I showed, church building, I keep telling this is the only one heavenly body we have at ISRO. Anyone can come there, touch it and get blessed, okay? <laughs> of course, this is uh, what we did uh, very latest, I think you would have seen number of times. You can see the same technique. You put it in this orbit, keep on increasing, and then here difference is that you have to go out of the Earth's orbit, then, you know, it comes, you can see that what was there, it has come here, Mars, and Earth also has moved. And when it comes nearer to that, you did the same trick of making it 180 degree and firing it. But the question is, it's much easier said than done. Your calculations, your, the, the, the kind of velocity that you need to bring, and the systems that are there, they have to function, they are all, you know, such a vast distance and... I think this was something unique. Uh, we are very, very happy about that. I think our uh, whole country and uh, these are uh, some of the uh, instruments which are there and uh, we presume that like water was conclusively found when our Chandrayaan was done. In fact, uh, 
what is called m square m cube by jet propulsion laboratory which was there i think they found but before that our own space physics laboratory of trivandrum also they had found clear evidence but they were little afraid to publish it <laughs> but then we lost the opportunity but nevertheless here also we hope that something very meaningful emerges one thing i can tell you that the kind of euphoria it brings in understanding the science you know people keep talking about everybody wants to go and become engineer everybody wants to go and become doctors everybody wants to become something else but then very few would think that they would become scientists the kind of challenges that that, that is available for scientists enormous i think if you go and sit in the planetarium and look at it you will understand what kind of science one can do youngsters should look at it very carefully and if you are good at it i am telling you one thing and if you are good at it definitely you will excel and i think you will become yet another star in the global community i i i just want to tell you for sure it's going to happen don't get discouraged i think if you are pursuing in science you are doing the right job okay we hope that something will come come out what is important is what next you know in rocketry one major problem is today it costs enormously high if i want to put 1 kg of payload into the orbit it costs anywhere between 15000 to 20000 us dollar why i say in us dollars is that is the common measure used all over the globe whom so where is that maybe we are little better because you know we still do it very economically but then it's not very far off in order to really gain the advantage for a country like ours we need to bring it down bring it down to what level from 15000 to is it 8000 5000 10000 1000 500 i think it's possible the only way to do it is you have to marry the technology of aircraft and launch vehicle rocket what happens it just burns and goes and falls into the sea it's called expendable whereas if you come out with the technology of aircraft you can just take it launch it come back okay in fact in 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 uh, space recovery that's what we did we put that module and brought it back you can refurbish and use it again why not the question is you know that is where you can see this this is the technology in fact we are doing one experiment this also would be flown very soon uh, maybe in another one year you can see that this is the first stage we use the aircraft technology but you marry the instead of putting the engine you put the rocket rear as a part of that then of course the second stage what it does you can see that that it just takes it to something like 100 120 km then just like an aircraft re enters you know how to handle all this i have already shown then it comes and then you have a parachute it just comes and lands in fact uh, we we are hoping that uh, it would land in sri harikota once it comes and lands of course you refurbish it again use it the idea here is that you are able to amortize the cost same vehicle for number of launches so you bring down the cost that's what it is and you know the one which goes into the orbit the second stage that separates the satellite is deployed and again you can get back like we did in the in the our space recovery experiment here so then again you can refurbish this is in fact not only us all over the globe they are working very hard advantage is you are able to bring down the cost you can derive enormous amount of returns to the country and i will not dwell there maybe if you are interested we can discuss later okay now this is something that we have worked very hard and we have made a report in fact this is one as an experimental we are going to fly in the mark 3 which is slated for launch in uh, next 3 to 4 uh, months it will you will see that this module we take it to the altitude and again re enter and the one below is the service module which takes care of the human being in terms of providing the life support the oxygen waste management many things these are all again different technologies and we have come out with a blueprint it has gone through national level debate and uh, several levels we are just awaiting the clearance by the government of india but then as a pre project activity several technologies have been developed and as i mentioned that we have already built one module as an experiment we are going to fly it very soon for that of course we have got the clearance you know again you, what you do is identical you just put it into the orbit then uh, like we did on the 
you just get it back and then come back and then recover in the sea okay that's all what you are going to do and uh, you know this is application side i just put two because i don't want to the kind of advantage you know this is what you see majestic bus stop taken long time back uh, i think all of you would recognize you know today you can get anything if your window is open or closed we can tell you okay this is of course uh, another application area where today we have done tremendous amount of uh, amount of uh, services to the country in terms of connecting the super speciality hospitals to remote and far off places you can see the numbers which are there why well, i can go on and on but essentially how you can see that the all these three areas are wedded to each other and everything is under our control we know the technology we can build a satellite we can build a payload we can launch it to the required orbit and once the satellite is put you know how to utilize the application and for what purposes so you can see that in almost all now this is the last slide excitements what really has happened over the last four four and a half decades in fact you know i can go on and on i think i would uh, not do that because there is a separate lecture on applications i am sure naval gund is going to give right i know he is a excellent speaker and he he would do much better than me i am sure that uh, you will if you don't miss that i think you should listen to that that is the one which really tells us what we have done for the country and uh, you know our own vehicles we have launched more than 74 spacecraft 43 voyages that means 43 launches we have done and we have today in this subcontinent more than 24 25 satellites of our own and i keep telling in again in the lighter vein that uh, you know if we decide to put off all these satellites for one day then you will feel that something is missing otherwise you wouldn't know that means it has stuck the leaves of each and every individual because the entire banking sector selling share markets are linked the television doordarshan the air the ai or many many services which are being offered by the satellite and like even just one transponder goes then they get an sos to chairman isro immediately and you know they 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 sort of like an emergency they operate you can see that you just put up all 25 what really happens that's why space has such a very individual in some form or other that's improving their lifestyles okay and it's not that we have been sort of uh, dreaming the applications applications are well thought of the country's needs are well articulated and very nicely they are integrated and come out with a plan and i think i would say that the dream of vikram sarabhai our founding father what he stated way back in 1962 is that utilize the applied advanced technologies for the benefit of mankind i think isro can say that today we have done it very effectively and we are able to provide very many societal solutions okay uh, one thing is uh, liquid propulsion is required uh mainly because uh, its power is more you know a kg of propellant if i carry compared to solid liquid has more power if i go for cryogenic it has much more power that means the energy that i can pack if i keep on changing from solid to liquid liquid to cryogenic i can pack for the same weight more power so i can bring down the weight of the vehicle ultimately i have to have a ratio of uh, the satellite to the the entire mass you know these are all only carry just like whether you would like to take in a maruti car or uh, ambassador car something like that so question is that in order to reduce the overall weight and also reduce the cost you go for these things number one number two is ultimately if you want to inject the satellite at the right point it's something like you know you have reached the the circle that you wanted to go in mysore you have gone there and you should take your vehicle to the side and stop it that can happen only if there is a liquid because liquid it gives the command on board computer gives the command and it just stops after stopping it has entered into the orbit you separate the satellite and then rest is over these are the two important advantages here as a token of our appreciation yes. uh, we present a memento to dr b n suresh uh, just a couple of words about the memento it has been made out of electronic waste <laughs> and uh, we take this opportunity to thank uh, professor keshav bulbule who is in the audience who was chiefly responsible for making that uh, memento 
for this occasion specially and uh, Dr. Parthasarathy who is not here in the audience but uh, who, uh, who is the director of uh, E-Parisara which is uh, devoted to um, recycling electronic waste scientifically and they are the pioneers in the country and they have come forward to uh, spread the message uh, by way of presenting this memento. So it contains a gold plated leaf uh, and uh, that gold has been completely recovered from electronic waste from used PCs and uh, other uh, electronic gadgets. And the message that they would like to say is that uh, leaf is the representative of environment and electronic uh, uh, waste is so rampant nowadays and he says that uh, environment is more precious than gold through this. So thank you very much for uh, the memento. Thank you very much.